Tired, weary, frustrated? What would you be doing if you weren't raising children alone? What's stopping you from living your best life now? On Solo Moms Talk, I discuss with solo mothers the challenges you face raising children alone. So if you're a working solo mom dealing with independent children, insensitive bosses, weight and health issues, or even debt collectors, join us as we discover your path to get and stay healthy, increase your income, and live with joy and purpose. In this battle of life. Hard to keep your head above the water. So win this fight. Today I'm speaking with Megan Barella. Um, thanks for coming and talking with me today, Megan. Rosemary, thank you so much for having me on today. Sure, it's my pleasure. So I'm sure we have interesting things to talk about, but uh, the most interesting thing is about you. So tell us who you are. Oh, thank you so much for that. Well, I'm the mom. I'm a single mom of a 13-year-old son. And yeah, I know the teenage years. It was a little bit of a mental adjustment. <laughs> <laughs> but now I, I got it for right now, at least. Um, so yes, I am a mom and I have a background in teaching. And then after my son was born, I swear when he was like about 18 months old, I feel like I heard his baby spirit whisper in my ear, if you really want to serve children, help their parents. Mm -hmm. And I became, yeah, I became certified in positive discipline. And I went through a period where, you know, I have a teaching background, like I love kids. And so his, the first three years of his life were just like, I just felt like a model mom. And <laughs> then I separated from his dad of 10 years. My mom was diagnosed with cancer. Mm. My father, who was abusive and mentally ill, he passed away. Then my mom died like six months later. And I call it my rebirth by fire year. I lost yeah. all my attachment figures, so much stress. I, I just became, I forgot every parenting tool I knew. My son got really angry and aggressive and I responded with more anger and aggression. So from that time, I really developed right now. I'm a, a positive certified, positive discipline, parent educator and a positive parenting coach. And so from that time, a high stress in my life, I developed my happy home framework that I share with parents now, because I feel like a lot of parenting approaches aren't really attuned to how stressful um, it is to parent right now uh, in the pandemic and also just how stressful life is to be mm -hmm. a person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that's a little bit about me. Okay. Right. Thank you for sharing lots there to unpack. And, but the main thing I want to unpack given our audience is what was your biggest struggle as a solo mom? Uh, what has been your biggest struggle? Yeah. Just being on all the time, mm. uh, especially when my son was little and you know, there's just, I have a great community and family, but just not having anyone to like take a break and to tag team and to piggyback. Now, granted, in some ways that was easier because the dynamic between mm -hmm. yeah, my son and his father wasn't always that smooth, but really just, just being on all the time. Yes, 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 for sure. Thank you. Well, it's something we can all relate to, I guess. And there, but there are ways of dealing with those situations and dealing with our own mindset. So we don't feel like we have to be everything to everyone all the time. Right. True. So okay. true. All right. So what made you focus on the discipline of the children? I have a story there I've never told anyone, but I wanted to know why you focused on that. Yeah. In positive discipline, we talk about how discipline means to teach. And it's like, I always thought discipline meant to punish. Mm. I really love that embodiment of discipline as teaching. Yeah. Yeah. We're guiding kids through our own modeling and yes. how becomes our inner discipline. So yes. that's what 
I love focusing on either helping. I work uh, with parents, but a lot with moms on, you know, either assertiveness or being more playful and just how discipline can, it can involve so many aspects of ourselves that we yeah, learned. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I understand that. And um, for for us who believe, the Bible says that whom the Lord loveth, he chastises. And that chastisement is in love and in guidance and in direction, not I'm going to beat you into the ground, <laughs> which is what most a lot of parents do. I experience it. And and so, yeah, I, I understand where you're coming from on that. And glad you're doing that because... I don't think we as parents, especially if we were brought up with that punishment mentality, we understand how to discipline. I think if more, we don't know how, you know, the government tells us don't beat them. The Bible tells us, well, don't um, spare the rat and spoil the child. And we experience something which we can't amalgamate with all the other things. And I, I assume that's why it's so difficult. And so it's really what you have going there. Is really, really useful for parents, especially a solo mom who don't have another person to consult with, right? Uh, yes. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I love the way that you explained that as well, because there are just a lot of mixed messages. And I feel like when we really show up in a way of discipline that we want to and that's effective with our children, we are showing up as our best selves as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so there were two parts to your your coaching. Um, so tell us about the parental the, the side of it. Yeah, like um, like working with the parent or changing our experiences with our own parents. Okay, yeah, yeah. I like that one. Yeah, I like that one. So can we can we do a little talk a little bit about that? Yeah, definitely. Um, You know, there are parents today who they're just able to be on autopilot. They like the way that they were raised. Um, They had parents who, you know, weren't perfect, but they were loving and respectful. Like they had the boundaries, but also they were listening to their kids. But I, I feel like that's not the, unfortunately, that's not the majority of parents today, at least the ones that I work with. Mm-hmm. Usually people find me when they're trying to change something major from the way that they were raised and yes. want to, yeah, be like their parents, um, whether it is that harsh discipline or neglect, um, or another form of abuse. So, I mean, it, it's, it is serious the way that we were raised because parenting is that blueprint. Like it's supposed to just be on autopilot. And for a lot of us, we're like, Oh no, like we're interrupting this pattern. Mm -hmm. Takes a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's very hard to pull yourself away from what you've learned. It's very hard to unlearn it. But I think if we realize that, that, that life that we're given is our own, to parent and, you know, uh, love and guide, you know, that's our job. It's not our, it's not our parents. Our parents did their best with us. Now it's for us to do our best with what we're, who we're given to do our best with. Right. I, I hope I'm explaining that right. So, so you help someone say, let's say I'm someone who grew up with, some issues with my parent and um I, I don't know quite know how to raise my children if- hello solo moms do you feel isolated and alone in your parenting journey are you tired of facing the challenges of solo parenting by yourself if so then i have the perfect solution for you join solo moms connect the ultimate support group for moms raising children on their own. As a solo mom of three adult sons, I want to provide a safe and welcoming space where you can connect with other moms, share your experience, and find and find answers to your questions. So don't go it alone. Be part of a thriving community of solo moms. Join Solo Moms Connect today 
and get the support and guidance you need to succeed as a solo parent. Join us today and be a part of a community of strong and resilient solo moms. Solo Moms Connect, building stronger communities one mom at a time. So don't wait. Click the link below and join us today. If I should do it the way they did it or if I should change that. So you help someone navigate that thought process and develop a plan of action of how to parent their children. Is that what you do? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I love the way you said that, like, just that it is our lives, you know, like to create that space and reflection and distance between the way we were raised. Just so that's what I help parents do. And the first thing is just really parents connecting with their unique strengths Mm -hmm. as individuals, because what I found is, especially for those of us who've experienced childhood trauma, it usually messes with our strengths, Mm -hmm. you know, and Yeah. So really getting, helping the parent really get that back for themselves and reclaim their strengths and learn how to access their strengths in stressful parenting moments. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's really because in parenting, you know, now we can like Google everything, but it's not like that. The parent parenting is so individualized And so for parents to connect with their strengths and also their values. Yeah. Unique values. And then who is their child? Yeah. How is their child similar to them? How is their child different to them? And so it's kind of like mapping almost everything out for what's going to work best for that family. Yeah. Yeah. And how how much different life is from way back when. I often remind my boys, you know, when I was a child growing up and they'll go, I was then, mom, you know. (laughs) (laughs) And there's some wisdom there, you know, that was then and this is now, you know, so, yeah. How old are your boys? My oldest is 38. Um, My middle son is 27, going on 28. And my youngest is 25, 26, sorry. So Aww. they're, yeah, they're up there. <laughs> Do yeah. they have children? My oldest has two daughters. Um, one just turned a month old yesterday. So, yeah. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's a different, if it's a different world right now. Yes. Yeah. Um, I question, in your experience, how has... How, you know, how was the way we we were raised as children, do you think, from your experience, affected how we make decisions with our own lives and in the lives of our children? Yeah. They say that um, the foundation of who we are is formed in early childhood, even though we don't remember it necessarily. Mm -hmm. So a lot of that, those core beliefs, and I really, I feel like it's a lot about what we believe about ourselves and the world. Mm -hmm. And so if we were in environments where we couldn't trust our caregivers, that really does set us up for a a lifetime of, of inner work, I would say. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And we may have um, adopted, you know, ways to cope with that situation that now, oh, they don't serve us, you know, like right. I'll work with a lot of parents with, you know, control tendencies, well, or perfectionism. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that could be the very things that we used as a child. They were and really trusting that that was our body's wisdom during the time, the yeah. wisdom of the mind to keep us safe. But then, oh, do they serve us now? Mm-hmm. And so, then going back to the strength, well, there's some strength in there. Um, and, and so really kind of neutralizing that, what might be showing up as now it's a coping mechanism now, but mm-hmm. it's not helping us. No. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, I remember with my oldest son, I tried to be a, a I had the tendency to be more disciplinarian where I was, you know, I was adamant that he obeyed me and it was a certain way and I didn't care about what he thought, you know, and then with my youngest one, I mean, I went way on the other side. I even saw that my oldest son tell me, mom, you're just lame. because <laughs> My two youngest sons just walk all over me. <laughs> he's, he's like, you're just lame. You know, so it's, it's, it's a hard balance, you know, to, especially if you haven't had the role models, you know, to kind of nurture you uh, and so that when you become a parent, you have something tangible to work with, you know, because some of us are working with nothing. We're coming, we're, we're still trying to figure us out, you know, so, and then when we have children, we have to figure out, <laughs> so it's not easy. Yeah. Not easy. I wonder too, though, if your kids needed something else too because some kids do need a more firm discipline you know and then other kids that doesn't work for them so yeah yeah I I always believe all things work together for good so (laughs) instead of regretting you know you just say well it worked out the way it should so (laughs) there we go yeah it's true and look at now you're holding that space to support other moms yeah yeah, so you know, yeah, yeah. Mm, cool. I do see that a lot. We call it in positive discipline, they call, call it like kind and firmness at the same time. <laughs> How a lot of times, you know, some of us are naturally more strict and disciplinarian, and other parents are more like permissive or pushovers. And it's really hard to develop that, that middle ground mm-hmm. where the structure and the boundaries with the love and the trust yeah. nurturing. Yeah. And especially if you get sensitive about their feelings. <laughs> Once you start getting sensitive about those, you know, their feelings, they start to just play you like a violin. <laughs> so, <laughs> you fall for that stuff. Well, so true. My experience anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy oh well this is fun but um what is Megan grateful for today oh I am grateful for the opportunity to serve and really to help kids through helping their parents and mm-hmm. I didn't realize how much I would need what I'm doing myself yes so yeah, yeah. You know, in that, like you're saying, like, it is beautiful. And I think just taking more, more moments out to really fully acknowledge that Mm -hmm. is so stressful. And yeah, yeah, yes, thank you. And how can we get in touch with you? Like, you know, yeah, on Facebook, I have a really nice um, positive parenting community. It's called Parenting for the Next Generation. Okay. Yeah. If people want to learn more about my programs, I host free events about three to four times a year. It's meganbarella.com. Okay. And what's your Facebook group? Is your Facebook group open? Like what is the name? uh, People will just request to join. And so, yeah. Okay. All right. We'll put that in the show notes so people can hop on over and say hello. Thank you. Yeah. For all you're doing to support solo moms and yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And um one piece of advice for another solo mom. Um anything really. Just be good to yourself. Just really mm-hmm. love yourself. You know, if you picture a really good friend or family member who is in your shoes right in this moment, what would you say to them? How would you support them? And really give that high level of support and encouragement mm-hmm. back to yourself. Because we tend to be harder on ourselves than we yes. are on other people. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you, Megan. And I appreciate you coming and talking to me today. Thank you, Rosemary, for all you're doing. And it was a joy. I really yes. appreciate it. Sure, thank you. I'm excited to share that Solomon's Talk is now on YouTube. Check out these interviews.
interviews on our new channel, Solomon's Talk TV. There you will actually see the interaction between myself and my guests. You will also find bite-sized clips of daily inspiration to help you manage the struggles of everyday life. So click Solomon's Talk TV below to watch now.